Well, as I said, there wouldn't be just cupcakes and rainbows, and it wouldn't just be this easy getting to inauguration. Now, we're going to be talking about what uh, Trump just put out, some phenomenal bombshell news that could help us and could uh, really change America for the betterment, and we're going to talk about those. But before we do, we're going to also talk about what Biden just did, what his administration just allowed just today, because now we're maybe seeing an escalation when Trump is trying to bring negotiation and peace. We'll talk about that. Also, we'll talk about how some of the governors of these liberal states, the ones you know that doesn't have voter ID, the ones that Kamala won, you know, they're now trying to tie up Trump with lawfare. Not only that, we're going to talk about an outbreak. The day of, is it just coincidental that the day of the election that Trump won, there's been an escape from a bio lab? Hmm, I don't know. Something we should talk about, think about, and ponder. Is it coincidental? And first of all, we had to contain it, and it's not been contained yet. We're going to talk about that story. Let's jump into these things and also a few more when it comes to some headlines of what Trump is doing. Good things are happening, but again, like I said, there's some tough roads that we will have to hold. Let's jump into it. Hey guys, welcome to The Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, that's okay. But let us know what you think about today's content. If you like the content, share it. Remember, subscribing and every time you comment, you get entered into a giveaway that we do at the end of the month. This month we're doing two because the winner of, of last month didn't reach out to us. So actually we have two big giveaways that we will do at the end of this month. Nothing better than having a, a free gift going into Christmas. Now let's jump into the stories of today. First, let's talk about what Biden just allowed. Just breaking last night was a story that Biden is now going to allow military contractors American military contractors. Now remember, most when they say that, what that is is defense contractors and also the fact and the ability of who they work for and who works for them, excuse me, is mostly veterans and uh, former Marines, former intelligence officers, former, uh, um, former military of some sort, some fashion. They just allowed now that if they want to go into Ukraine, they can have boots on the ground and they can realize what they have under their contracts. They can work wholeheartedly with Ukraine. Now, this is something that we knew that was kind of happening, but now it's, it's being announced that the Biden administration has no problem with it. Now, this just comes hours after Trump has sent a negotiation plan to uh, Russia and also to Zelensky. Now, Zelensky, they said, is kind of chide at it and didn't want to go for it, but it's like one of those things where if we cut the spigot off or we make him go for it, it's going to pretty much happen. Now, Belarus, the, the president there said, if, if we could find peace in this, gener this area, and also some of the EU in this area said the same thing, if we could make peace, Trump deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. Because again, this is something that needs to stop. We should not be seeing this war keep on going. Well, the more that we, as the administration, again, not that we back what Biden and Harris are doing, but they're now allowing the escalation to happen to now they're allowing more defense contractors into Ukraine and gives them all the rights to do what they want to do. This is only going to impact us more because what's going to happen is one failed situation or one problem with one of these contractors, now you have American hostages stuck under Russian rule. Is this really what we want? Why did all of a sudden did they allow this to happen? Well, now back at home, again, this is not the cupcakes and rainbows and how we think that it's going to be that easy. That's happening. And then also governors. There's a story that came out, and you can read about it more on Epic Times, but it says there's a breaking report where multiple governors and AGs are rolling out plans to contest the election. Now, isn't it funny how they got mad at Trump for doing the same thing back in 2020, which, to be honest with you, there is evidence for. There's not evidence for it here. And, and all the while, you still have one state that can't even count all their votes, Arizona. What a sham. So now you have... Attorney generals and governors, only of those liberal states who does not have voter ID, wanting to contest the election. So the more that we see lawfare used against them, the more it's going to cause problems with the transition. It's going to cause problems with uh, the start of his administration, because just like they did with 2016, where they throw all these hoaxes there, are they trying to do that once more, where then they can tie him up in so much litigation that it won't matter, where you're already starting to see it. Now, the difference here is Trump wore the popular vote, and he also won the Electoral College by bigger numbers than he did in 2016. 
This is huge, and that's why we need to pay attention to this, pay attention to the fact that we need more leadership, Senate leadership and, and Republican leadership from the Congress standing up and backing Trump and not even allowing this to go forward. That's what Trump did not have last time, is he had leadership that did not support him, the McConnells, the Ryans, and so forth. Now, Trump does not need to make the same mistake. He needs to make sure that he has leadership that does support him. That's why I'm very, very I'm cautiously optimistic because you're hearing rumblings of Pompeo and, and uh, Rubio, and you're hearing rumblings of all these people like Rogers. Mike Rogers? This guy wants to go to war with his grandma. I mean, he, he would go to war with his nana because all he does is love war. And he is one of the biggest defense contractor kickbacks of a lobby and that, that there is. Look at his numbers. There's rumblings of those kind of people that's going to be in the administration. And, and personally, those are bad failed moves. Every one of those tried to throw Trump under the bus when 2020 came around. Now, let's see what actually happened. Now they're all like kissing his feet. It's kind of like the Lindsey Graham thing. It's all these sleazy politicians do not deserve a place in this administration. Yes, you have to have somebody who knows the ins and outs of the Beltway and ins and outs of, of maybe some of the, 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 the Washington uh, situation, the swamp. But don't get someone who is not completely devoted to the calls. And we have to be careful of that. So I hope Trump is being very conscientious because this is what's going to happen. Lawfare is going to tie him up, and he needs leadership on the Republican side that supports him. Now, some good news, some big things that Trump is trying to push. He's coming out with like almost daily um, situations and executive actions and what his plans are for the first few days in office. The incoming president and administration will be prepared to declare a national emergency and will use military assets to reverse the Biden invasion and the mass deportation program. Now, this is a catch-22. I'm not saying that we want to use military versus uh, Americans. That's the difference here. There's two reasons Trump is using military, and I think this could actually benefit us. It's to expedite the situation because we need to get these people out of the country, especially if they're bad players and criminals. Why would we not want them out of the country? Secondly, there's another report where Trump is saying he is going to use all means necessary when it comes to his military to stop the cartels and the trafficking across the border. This is one of those things they can work hand in hand. This is the same group of individuals who can help with deportation, which can close the border too, but also handle the cartels. Now this is one thing I think we should be doing when it comes to military safety, because this deals with our border. Look how many people die of overdoses and I mean, how many people are taken and kidnapped and trafficked. This is a threat to America. Ukraine is not a threat to America. Russia you, is not a threat to America. The, the situation with Taiwan and, and China, yes, it has some ramifications with technology, but it is not a direct threat to the land of the United States. What is a direct threat? What is a direct threat? Our borders. So not only do we need to close the borders, we also need to see the fact that he is wanting to use the military to help get these people who are not supposed to be here out of here back to their country so they're, therefore lower and middle income Americans can get back to doing their work, renting their properties and getting the jobs that they should be getting. Not only that, we should be using it to go for the cartels. I also love that Trump said that he is willing to take funds and take power from these cartels. Who cares what Mexico says? This is about America. This is where you go in, you confiscate what these cartels have, you take their power you dissemble them using military, using all means necessary because they're the ones that are direct threats to America and to the sovereignty of our border. You take these out, you confiscate what they have. The monies and assets that you take, you help pay for these families to get back home to their places. Send families back. It doesn't matter what it costs, but here's the benefit. If you start getting some of these multi-billion dollar situations with when it comes to cartels because that's what they're worth, then think of, the, think of how you could help families get away from all these drugs and epidemic problems they're having in these cities. Not only that, you could help uh, restore families back to where they're from, help them assimilate back to their people, and that way Americans can have jobs back here, and then you secure border. Major news. I don't want to use military against Amer American citizens. But in this case, when it's allowing people to get out of our country to keep us safe, I'm all for it. Listen to what he's planning. This is, this is a list that he came out with. He will deploy all necessary military assets, including the U.S. Navy, to impose full naval embargoes on the cartels. Because remember, a lot of their imports are coming from China. Well, you stop that, you not only 
make sure that you're handling the China situation, you're also handling the traffic drug situation. Guarantee the waters of the Western Hemisphere are not to be trafficked for illicit drugs. Order the Department of Defense to make appropriate uses of cyber warfare and other overt and covert actions to help break down the leadership of this cartel operation, designing major cartel and foreign terror organizations to get rid of them. Find out who they are and dispose of them. Sever the access to global systems. Again, remember, global war on drugs is huge. Huge dr drugs are taking over a lot of these areas, especially cities, all across the world. He's wanting to stop that. Not, so this doesn't only help Americans, it helps everyone across the world to make for a better life for them and get these kind of things off our streets. Now let's go to another plan that he came out with. Trump has a plan to decimate the establishment in the deep state. Listen to this. He says, I'm going to detail a 10-point plan that would help us. Listen to this. And this is where, to me, this is where his life is at risk. Because if he starts doing this, this is where it's going to get tough. And that's why I hope he has private security, not just the ones that are by the government. Immediately reissued my 2020 executive orders restoring the president's authority to remove rogue bureaucrats, meaning he can fire who he chooses to fire, especially if they're in the bureaucracy who's working against American values. Clean out all the corrupt actors in the national security and intelligence apparatus, meaning if they're not there to support American values, not about presidency, not about politics, but to really ensure Americans' security, they do not need to be there. Everyone that's allowed this border to be open, especially in the intelligence services, should be fired on the spot. Totally reform FISA courts to where they cannot use corrupt judges to get things passed to find out information that they want to find out. They'll use those warrants to their ability and not to what the law actually says because of these judges. Expose the hoaxes and abuse of power when it comes to tearing our country apart. So like, le like legacy media, they get a free pass to spew what they want on free access to cable and to network television. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. So if, if they're causing a problem, they should pay for a space or they should have a private situation, private subscription where they're allowed to do that. Do I have any problem with free speech? No, that's not what I'm talking about here. But if you're going to allow free speech for them, you need to allow free speech for the other side. There's not one network in television and there's not one network that is pushing conservative nuclear values that supports conservative Christians or conservative families. So what he's saying is we're going to balance that out. Now, he didn't say he's going to shut these down. He's just going to allow for true access. Now, I'll be honest with you. I think this goes back to social media, too. I have no problem if you own your own platform and you're able to say what you want to say. No, no problem. But when you censor one side and you don't censor other, that's where the double standard comes in, and I think that's what he's trying to clean up. He's not wanting to allow no one to speak. What he's doing is saying, I want to allow for equal playing field for people to speak. I want to give access to where people can get the information they want, no matter what it is, and they have the freedom to say what they want to say, but they should not be closed down and they should not be shut down for having their voice, especially when it goes against the legacy media or goes against that company. Furthermore, it goes on to launching a major crackdown on government leakers who collude with fake news and deliberately tried to make false narratives. Think about all the things that's been against Trump and all the lawfare, all the hoaxes, everything. Those leakers shouldn't get any kind of whistleblower privileges. If they falsify or they're leaking something that shouldn't be leaked, they should be persecuted for doing that. They are breaking the law. That's, that there's a difference in someone trying to say, okay, I'm a whistleblower trying to expose dangers than someone that is leaking uh, maybe truths or tries to spread rumors of falsities. That is exactly what's happened this last eight years on Trump. He's been the, the most targeted in these kind of attacks. So I think this can only benefit conservatism and only benefit true free speech and allow for the falsities to stop. And here's some of the bigger ones. This is the ones I like. Ask Congress to establish an independent auditing system to continually monitor the intelligence agencies, meaning the CIA, the, 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 the intelligence, DHS, and all this, uh, the FBI, all these, these intelligence agencies, they'll have oversight. They won't just be able to do what they want to do because that, that's kind of where you get to the intelligence deep state, right? Where we actually know what happened to Kennedy. We actually know what happened in some of these situations where all of a sudden we're, we have no knowledge of what actually happened with this person, this person, this person. 
will have oversight of that. Now, do I believe we need Congress to do that? No, because Congress is worthless. But he also come out and said, we're going to have inspector generals who are independent of, uh, of different organizations. So, like, if you have someone who is over the intelligence and he's an inspector general and he works for the intelligence agency, do you actually think he's going to do a good job of not being biased? So he's saying we're going to have independent inspector generals who are willing to look into these issues that does not work for the agency that they're looking into. That's pretty smart, huh? It's kind of like an inspector general who works for the FDA and USDA. Would it be smart for him to audit his own agency and tell other wrongs? Most of the time it doesn't happen that way and nothing actually happens. I mean, prime example, listen to this news and then we'll go back to the last two points of Trump. This is why you need independent inspector generals and also independent people who are looking over these bureaucracies. Between 2006 to 2019, this is from uh, Ken Coe the Great that uh, Elon Musk reshared and reposted. It says, nine of the 10 FDA commissioners went to work for the pharmaceutical companies that they were once in charge of regulating. So nine out of the 10 FDA commissioners who is supposedly there to help Americans from the overstepping of the food and drug companies then become workers from for these companies. So the companies they once tried to regulate, they just got jobs in. So what they did is they just said, look, we'll allow this to go through. That sounds like a quid pro quo, right? Nine out of 10, that's not coincidental. Do you think he's being honest? Do you think any of these guys are honest? Because what it is is they're saying, look, I'll, I may turn my back on this one, but I better get something in return. All of a sudden they get multi-packed millions of dollars worth of deals and director seats and to work for these companies after they quote unquote leave the regulatory system. That's why you need and you need these bureaucracies dismantled and broken down and you need independent inspector generals looking over this and saying the reporting right to maybe Trump or right to an independent source say you know what look, look at what's happening. This needs to be exposed because what they're doing is they're basically allowing things to pass in order to get a job later. That's dangerous. Two more, and then we're going to talk about this outbreak that, that is pretty, I think, serious. Continue the effort to launch the Trump administration to move parts of the federal bureaucracy out of Washington. Washington voted like 90-something percent for Kamala. What that is is a deep state or bureaucracy. What he's saying is I'm going to get some of these, these bureaucrats out of Washington to where they can't just work together and keep living in this swamp that we call government. So he's talked about moving EPA, he's talked about moving FBA, he's talked about moving all these agencies. Not only dismantling some, but to get rid of this area that we want as American values instead of bureaucracy, instead of the deep state, instead of people who actually are not having America's interest at heart. They have their own narcissism and their own self-righteousness and their own self-financing uh, goals to get rich off the American people sitting right there in the cesspool that we call Washington, D.C. in a swamp. So he's starting to get some of them out. And then lastly, one of the best ones, I don't think it's going to happen unless it's grandfathered in, and we'll talk about this on another video, but he's warning Congress to take on term limits. Now, we'll talk about that in another video. I actually have a great idea of how we can actually do term limits. Now, last thing we need to talk about is this story of a biolab leak. Now, a lot of people have not touched this, and I'll be honest with you, I've read it, and I was like, no, this can't be true. But the more I dive into it, they're actually doing news regional news studies on this and talking about it regionally because of the dangers of it. Listen to this. 43 monkeys escape South Carolina research facility. Police warn residents to secure doors and windows because of this leak. Now this is from a biolab research facility. So I'm guessing they're doing testing with these monkeys. 43 monkeys escape and as of me taping this they've not caught any of them. It says authorities in South Carolina on Thursday warned residents to lock their doors because more than 40 monkeys have escaped from a research facility. As of Friday morning, the fugitive monkeys had not been captured, said the CEO. The 43 primates broke loose from an alpha genesis facility in Beaufort County, prompting officials to set traps to use thermal imaging cameras to try to find the efforts of these monkeys. Now, we need to ask a few questions here. Why do we have these monkeys in captivity? What are these monkeys being tested for? Why is this a bio lab area that's not actually contained better and what happening and how did they escape this facility and what kind of quote unquote research bio lab is this? That's some of the hardest questions to ask. Forget the monkeys for a second. Let's talk about this lab. What is the situation with the lab? And then let's try to track down these monkeys because are these monkeys contaminated? Are these monkeys have some kind of 
disease or they have these been tested with some kind of gain of you know what? We need to find out what this means. Because in this area, they're talking about how, how dangerous this could be. Now, national media has not touched this too much. I don't know why. But I think this is something that we need to talk about because what if all of a sudden we see more of these leaks, these situations where there are outbreaks happening in these, cli these, these clinics? What if all of a sudden we see biolabs having problems with keeping their subjects in and not letting them out? All this plays into a bigger thought pattern that reminds me of uh, 2020. We need to pay attention to these kind of stories because first of all, we need to know what they're researching, what are they doing, what are they doing to these monkeys, and why is PETA and people like that not up in arms about it? Why is all these people that want you know, containment of animals away and they talk about you know, dogs on the street but then they'll allow monkeys to be contained for some kind of research? I think we just need to dive a little deeper and find out what actually is happening at this lab. Why are these monkeys out and why, what kind of bio lab is this and what could these monkeys actually have? And then, you know, of course, they're using the restroom all over our lands. They ha are eating our food or they contaminate in certain parts of this part of America. This is not a conspiracy. This is not me trying to be crazy and make you fear. I'm just saying we should probably know a little bit more about these monkeys and also what's happening at this testing facility. Anytime I hear about testing facilities and, and uh, lab research, it gives me the hippie-jibbies a little bit because that's exactly what quote-unquote happened in 2020. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts on this video. I, I, again, good things are happening. I mean, when you hear that Trump wants to go after the cartels and shut down our border and also wants to demolish the, the bureaucracy of Washington, those are good things. But then you also hear that Biden is wanting to send military contractors and gives a full pass to allow them to put people on the ground, boots on the ground in Ukraine. That could end up in a catastrophic event that Trump has to deal with as it comes around January. Now, remember, we have lawfare, lawfare, lawfare. Everybody's going to go for lawfare. I think this is where we have to pay attention again. Don't allow these governors and these AGs to just target this man and not have true Republican conservative leadership standing against it. They need, we need to have people in power that support Trump and support his administration and his plans, not people who work against him. So the... So to me, the biggest deal is not the fact that they're going after him, we knew that, is the fact of who is Trump going to put beside him to make sure he can dodge these, these, these attacks and work alongside him and not let it get in the way of him running the country. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this again. Uh, Got to get those monkeys back in too. Guys, thank you so much again for, for commenting below, supporting us. It means the world to us. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless. Be free. Be free.